All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, this video, I'm going to talk about something, something a little more serious. Um, I put a video up today. Today is Sunday, and I put my last video up today. Not my last video, but the last video that I put up. I edited that this morning, put it up, and it was on putting that little patch on the truck. And the reason I didn't get it welded in and everything like I had originally planned, I wasn't feeling very good. I This has happened to me a couple of times. Last night, at the end of that video, I had a really bad headache in the front of my head. I was dizzy. My heart was beating about 98 beats a minute and just didn't feel very good. And I'm wondering if I'm not getting carbon monoxide poisoning off of these two heaters running in here. If you watch my channel, I'm sure you, you hear these heaters interrupting me all the time and I have to go over here and I shut them off. But these are the two torpedo heaters that I run. One of them, this one here is like 20, it's 20 some years old. Ready heater, it's 115,000 BTU. This one I just got last, last winter. DeWalt, it's 135,000 BTU. And when I get them both going, it'll, it'll heat it up in here. It'll take it from about 45 up to about 70 in about 10 minutes. But you're really not supposed to run these kind of heaters in an enclosed area like this. You probably should have the door opened up a couple of feet. Problem is, if I do that, these heaters are just going to run non-stop and burn through a heck of a lot of fuel. And I've never had a problem before. I've done this for several years. Last year I ran both of them in here, no problem. So I went and I picked up, this is a kit of carbon monoxide alarm detector, whatever you want to call it. It has a digital readout here. It'll tell you parts per million of carbon monoxide that is in the air. And we'll go over that here after a while. But I want to get this plugged in. I'm going to turn the heaters on, get them going. They'll be running a good, probably a good 10, 15 minutes heating this place up. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. Never had one of these before. And of course they package it so you can't open it with your fingers. That's why I got the knife out. I did do a little bit of reading on this and it is supposed to cycle, cycle through every, I think it's every 15 seconds. It was a test. And I don't know, I'd have to read, hopefully there's a book in there or something. I think for different levels, it, it will take different amount of time for it to set the alarm off. Not 100% sure on that. Uh, yeah, here's a little little book. So I'll, uh, I'll read up on that. We'll get this all set up here. It does run on electric. You can either just plug it straight into the outlet or I guess it does have a cord in there. It also has a uh, nine volt battery backup. I'm not real concerned with that at the moment, but there we go. You get that out. It's got a power cord, so I can plug this in. I'm going to set it over here on the table. Yeah, it's got a place for the battery backup somewhere. I don't know if I really need that. Yeah, Might as well plug it in, I guess. Alright, we got that. I thought it was supposed to have a stand of some kind. There we go, like that. And it's already reading zero. The little uh, little corner dot is flashing, which I did read. That's just telling you that it's working. And I did have the heaters running just a little bit down here because it was pretty darn cold. So I did warm it up. It's already getting cold again, but I don't know if this will reach over there. Hold on. All right, so I ran an extension cord over here. Got this set up. As you can see, it has a zero on it. That little dot's flashing wherever it is down here in the lower right hand corner that's just telling you that it's working really that's all there is to it it does have a a peak level so you can push that and it should display the peak level which we haven't had any levels um, let's see test reset okay i know three eighths should go to zero well i read that somewhere three eighths and then it should go to zero. All right, so now it's working. I am going, I'm gonna turn the heaters on and uh, we'll see what happens. They're gonna run for a while. I may leave here, although I've been down here many times before, but uh, come back and we'll see what it says here after a bit. Already cycled on and off two or three times. Only been running for probably, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes. And any more 
they'll turn on and run for, I don't know, maybe a minute, minute and a half, and they shut off for a little bit. They just turned off. But I was reading up on this uh, alarm a little bit. It says, the carbon monoxide sensor will not alarm to levels of carbon monoxide below 30 parts per million and will alarm in the following time range when exposed to corresponding levels of carbon monoxide. 70 parts per million be one to two hours, 150 parts per million, 10 to 50 minutes, 400 parts per million, four to 15 minutes. So we could have a little while yet before anything happens, if anything is gonna happen. So far it's still on zero. I kind of find it hard to believe, but, uh, but I'm gonna let them keep running and we'll see what happens. Only other thing that I can think of, unless I just have a bug, but even if these aren't giving off a bunch of carbon monoxide, I wonder if they could be burning up, you know, just burning up a lot of the oxygen in here. All right, guys, it is the next morning and a rather cool morning out. I see the dogs are sitting up on the porch. It's 17 degrees, no wind. Looks like the sun might try to come out here after a while, but, uh, and then it looks like here towards the end of the week, end of the first part of next week, we're supposed to be up in the forties to near 50. And it actually looks like clear through the end of December, we're going to, I think we're going to get through December unscathed and uh, hopefully January is the same way. Get back in the shop here. It's cold out here. But heck, we get through December okay and then we've just got a couple of months. We get through January and February. March, March can go either way. Generally though, towards the, the second half of March, things start turning around pretty good and maybe we'll get through this winter okay. Then in April, we'll be in the field again. Anyway, I think I said last night, I didn't go back and look, but uh, the highest this thing read was 23 parts per million. I read a little bit ago that 0.2 is generally what's in just normal air, zero to 0.2. And nine parts per million is the maximum accepted level for, I think, living like in your house. 23, that's, that's low level. I think 50 and below, something like that is considered low level. But it's my understanding carbon monoxide builds up in your blood. And if I'm down here 12, 14 hours a day, uh, I don't know. And that the alarm on that won't go off, I don't think, until it hits 70. It'll, it'll keep track of what it's been, but I don't think the alarm goes off till 70. So I'm thinking that even 23 parts per million, if that's the highest it ever gets, over the course of, you know, I've been down here long days sometimes, and 12, 14, even 16 hours a day, I imagine probably not real good for you. And I tell you what I'd really like to do is get a corn burning stove. Yeah, I got this heater sitting over here, that hanging heater that I picked up last spring. Not exactly sure how I'd get it hung up in here. We've talked about that before. Plus, I have to get an LP tank outside, get everything plumbed in here. Just, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'd like to get a corn burning stove. We've, we've got plenty of corn around here. And I did a little bit of figuring. Corn stove, approximate price for a corn stove to heat this area, about $1,500. Burn rate of corn is about one and a half pounds uh, on the maximum, the high setting on, on said stove. Be about one and a half pounds of corn an hour. Let's say 12 hours a day. So that'd be 18 pounds a day. 18 pounds a day times 30 days for a month, 540 pounds a month. 540 pounds divided by 56. Dry, dry bushel of corn weighs about 56 pounds. Uh, that'd be 9.6 bushels. So let's just say 10, 10 bushels a month at, I think the current price is 388. So 10 bushels a month at 388, that's 3880. 3880, let's go for the next three months, $116. Let's just say $120. To continue running these heaters, diesel fuel, I believe is about 288 a gallon right now. 10 gallons every couple of days is about what I use, especially if it gets colder than it is now, which it probably will. But let's say 10 gallons every two days, 150 gallons a month. So 150 gallons at 288 a gallon is $432 a month. 432 for the next three months is $1,296. So if I were to get a corn stove right now, the first year looks like corn stove cost me about $16.20 to continue running these heaters, about $12.96, difference of $324. So it'd, it'd be $324 more expensive to get a corn stove than to continue running these heaters. But I imagine it would be a lot healthier for you. Any amount of carbon monoxide can't be good for you, especially if it builds up in your bloodstream. 
Like I said, I'm no expert on the topic, but uh, I think I'm having some adverse effects from it. Not to mention a corn burning stove I think would be a heck of a lot quieter and I wouldn't have these guys interrupting me all the time because I, I always forget to shut the darn things off. Although, although I did this time, so they're, they're not gonna turn on until I turn them on. And I think if I got said corn burning stove, I'd probably clean out this area and just put it over here Get to move these guys out of here. And from what I've read about them anyway, there's not a whole lot to do as far as uh, the exhaust. It's pretty much just a straight shot right out the wall. Kind of like a uh, high efficiency furnace out the out the side of your house. It's just, just a pipe. So I don't know, I've just started looking at them. Um, I'd really like to get one. Probably find a used one, but do I, do I wanna get a used one? So that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm gonna continue monitoring this all day. So it's early afternoon and I reset this to zero. So we'll see if it, uh, see if it registers anything. The heaters really aren't kicking on too often, which they'll probably do any time now. But uh, even though it's pretty cool outside, there's no wind. And when there's no wind, there's not a lot of draft coming in anywhere. So, so it doesn't take a whole lot to keep it warm in here, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. They do kick on and off, but not real often. So like I said, I reset this. It's been about an hour ago and I just hit it and it's uh, showing 10. So 10 parts per million is as high as it's got. Not sure why it, I don't know if it displays it on there when it reaches, I, I don't know. Anyway, the peak level, we're at 10. We'll see how it does through the rest of the day. So as a little experiment, first off I have the, the carbon monoxide detector over here on the table now. It's reading 11, I think, uh, 15, it went up. But I am going to, well, we're old Mama Kitty. I let her in the shop because she was cold. So I'm gonna let Mama Kitty warm up, but I'm gonna put the uh, carbon monoxide detector alarm, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna put it on top of here, which is about 15 feet away from the heaters. And we'll see what kind of reading we get. All right, guys, it is the next morning. I keep having SD cards, SD card errors. I'm not sure what's going on there. I think I just need to get another new SD card. The one that's in the camera is new, so I'm not sure what's going on. But anyway, I came down here this morning and we're sitting at, we're sitting at 22, 22 parts per million, which is above, above normal, but it's not, not incredibly high in short. Are these kind of heaters good for you to run in a place like this? No. I mean, 22 parts per million is not bad, not good. And it's my understanding carbon monoxide builds up slowly in your system on low levels like that. So being down here for 12, 12, 14 hours a day, probably not a good idea. So if you're running these types of heaters in a shop like this or similar to this or whatever, be careful, not, not a good idea. Um, should open the door somewhat, have some good ventilation. And I think I'm gonna be looking into some kind of alternative heating down here. Whether I just figure out how to get that thing hung up in here, get it all plumbed in, get an LP tank outside, get all, get all that hooked up. Or a corn burning stove, pellet stove, even a wood burning stove. I know some people have mentioned wood burning stoves and I have an old wood burning stove in the old shop. Just it never seemed to give off very much heat. It's not a real big one. But they are considerably cheaper than a corn stove or a pellet stove. So I don't know. I'm going to look into things here and, uh, and see what I can come up with. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Gonna get back to work on the truck.